Hello, I'm the Engine Cadet, and like I said in the previous video, I'm going to try my best to explain sounding and why it's important on board. Believe it or not, this small job is important for both engine and deck department, and we'll see why. So as always, we need to get the basic overview clear before going on. When we sound, we use this, our trusty sounding tape which you can see has a weighted bob at the end. The objective is to have this bob go down and touch the bottom of this tank. This is going to give us a sounding measurement. And this sounding measurement combined with our sounding and ullage tables is going to give us the volume, the volume of the liquid inside the tank. Don't worry, we're going to go step by step, and I'll show you at the end an example. It's going to be easy. To begin, let's review on how we get this measurement. Let's imagine we're in front of the tank we want to sound. As you can see in the video, these tanks have a quick closing valve. So, we open this valve and place a sounding plug to keep this valve open. Next, you should already know the depth of the tank so you know how much tape you're going to put inside. Remember, this bob has to touch the bottom of the tank, no more. And, depending on the tank, you might have to use paste. Remember that clear liquids, such as water or diesel, don't make a clear indicator about their level. So we use this paste to make an indicator which is the color change. So now our little guy is ready to drop his sounding tape. So he drops the sounding tape until you can see the previous marked level, in case it's a clear liquid tank, and places the paste. If it's not a clear liquid tank, then he can just drop to the bottom. After marking, he drops to the bottom, but being careful, so when you finally see on the tape the limit, then you straighten it, like you can see in the video, to ensure that when you drop it slowly, you can feel the bottom of the tape with the bob. Then you know that you're not getting a false reading. If you drop it more, look what might happen, a bend. And this bend is going to tell you that there's more than what there really is inside. I'll tell you why this is very important. You should be very precise. So now that this guy hit the bottom of the tank, you can pull out the sounding tape until you reach the measurement. Write down the measurement and clean the tape properly, please. Talking about housekeeping. I need to ensure that you know why it's important to always lock the tape. You see, if you don't lock the tape, in the video I showed you, it becomes a mess. And this mess creates little bends on this tape. If you don't have proper care with the tape, these bends will eventually alter the length of the tape which means you're going to have incorrect sounding each time you use it. And trust me, you don't want to be the cadet who screws up the sounding tape. I mean, it's one of your first jobs. Please, do it with care and do it with love. So now you have your sounding measurement, but you need one more piece of information before going to the sounding and ullage tables. You see, the ship isn't always completely straight. It has a trim, and this trim affects the volume inside the tank. As you can see here, you can see that liquid isn't exactly like gas. When there's movement of the tank, the liquid moves also, and this can affect your measurement, as you can see here. How do we find the trim? Easy. Just a quick trip to the cargo control room will fix that. Just go there, check the computers, and I'm pretty sure you'll find the trim. So now we have sounding measurement, we have the trim, we can go to the tables. 
And this is where this formula comes in. You see, sounding tables were created in the shipyard by very smart people using really crazy math stuff. Why? Because tanks are irregular in shape. You know, some come like this, some come like this, but rarely they're completely square. Anyway, these measurements are certified. This is what's in your tank if you have that level. Therefore, it's very important to do proper sounding, especially on deck side when you have cargo tanks with tons of fuel. No, not tons, tons, as in metric tons. And a small variation of your sounding can cost a lot of money. Another important reason is bunker. You see, sometimes the vessel needs to refill fuel while at sea from little bunker barges. These bunker barges say how much they will give you. However, you need to verify that by sounding tanks. And the person in charge of the bunker operation should periodically sound to check the levels to ensure that the right tank is being filled that the rate of transfer is correct and to see if it's closing in on the finishing point or if in any case it's reaching the alarm levels of 95%. You should know that not only the deck department requires proper sounding, in the engine room there's too many tanks and these tanks require sounding as well, such as fuel oil tanks for settling, for storage, also, waste tanks such as bilge holding tank, oily bilge tank, waste oil tank. All these things need to be properly accounted for. You might already know, but there's such a thing called an oil record book in Marpol Annex 1, Prevention of Oil Pollution. This oil record book is usually kept by the chief engineer, which has the metric tons of these waste tanks and this is very very important because you as a cadet are probably sounding these tanks and if you give an improper reading this is going to go all the way up <laughs> now you can see the problem if you're not doing a good job so please even though it's a small job take lots of care sounding so let's get started with this example Let's imagine that we sounded the bilge holding tank and we got a sounding measurement of 95. We know the trim of the vessel by checking the cargo control room and we found that our trim is at 3. So we go to the all engine sounding tables and check the nearest lowest me lower measurement and the nearest higher measurement which in this case would be 90 and 100. So, on 90, with a trim of 3, we have 12.7 cubic meters on my vessel. On 95, which was our sounding measurement, we don't know, so it's X. And at 100, we have 14.7 cubic meters. So looking at it logically, you can see that it's going to be one cubic meter, no? Because if it's the difference between the lowest measurement and the highest measurement is two cubic meters, and you take half of that because it was from 90 to 95, it's going to be 13.7 cubic meters. But, the, you know, it's not always so simple. It's not always so direct. So let's use our formula and see and or verify this answer. So, we take the difference between our sounding measurement and the lowest measurement, which is 5. And then we take the difference between our lowest measurement and the highest measurement, which is going to be 10, the difference between 90 and 100. Then we take the difference between the volume of the lowest measurement and our measurement, which we don't know. We're going to say that's Y. 
and then we take the difference between the volume of our lowest measurement and the volume of our highest measurement, which in this case is two cubic meters. So five over 10 is like saying one half, yeah? And if we pass the two to keep our y alone on one side, it's gonna be y equals two times one half. So two cancels out two, and we have one cubic meter. And this is where the formula changes. You see, you add or subtract depending if you're sounding or you're taking ohage. If you're sounding, imagine, if your sounding measurement is higher, that means that the level of the liquid is higher, which means you have more volume. However, if you're taking ohage, ohage is the empty space. So if your ohage is higher, that means there's less volume of liquid. That's why we subtract. Simple, right? So since we were sounding, we'll add this one cubic meter to our lowest measurement, which gives us 13.7 cubic meters. But we could logically guess. But if you have other measurements that are not so perfectly square, just follow this procedure and I'm sure you'll find the volume. So I hope this video can show a little bit about the importance of this small job that has a pretty big impact. And also, if you're a cadet or a lower ranked person in the department, they're probably gonna give you this job. And now you know the importance of it. So put a little bit more care, keep tidy, good housekeeping, and you'll do a great job. See ya.